All right, we so are. let's get started. Would you like to introduce yourself, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Mark, and I run the Instagram account Men Who Bullet, um, YouTube and Instagram and all the things. Um, and excited to be hanging out with you today. Thanks. I'm excited to be hanging out <laughs> with you today too. It's been it has been a hot minute since I've been doing videos on YouTube. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's been, it's it's definitely been over a year, which has been a has bit- Has it been that long? It has actually been that long. It has been, um, I think the last one was not last year, but the year before August. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. So it has been- You're, you're busy. Minute. Well, there's busy and then there's avoiding YouTube. So- <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the process of YouTube. I can't get enough of it, but I think it's just because, I don't know, I like that creative process, so. Oh, uh, I think, you know what? I think it was that that one video I did and it just put me off oh. for a little while and I needed I needed to regroup <laughs> a little bit. Understandably. Um, it was... It was uh, um, it was a it hot was, one. <laughs> it was a hot one. It's still a hot one. People are still hot on that one. It still gets tons of views. I'm a little bit surprised. I think maybe yeah. I need a follow up. Um, <laughs> you need one of those messy bun apology videos or something uh, like I'm so y'all. Sorry. I'm... <laughs> um, I didn't mean to say anything crappy about your crappy company. <laughs> <laughs> whoops I did it again crap now i'm gonna have to do two messy bun videos all right anyway <laughs> so i thought it would be a great opportunity just to have a chat about yeah. all the journal stuff um what you've been up to what i've been up to things that are happening in the community things that are new things yeah. that are different things that are seem to be trending um just because i have taken a break doesn't mean i'm not all over the community like a hot rash <laughs> i know i think that's, i think it's a big misperception is that if you're not posting you're not paying attention i mean i know there are some people that just like kind of get over it and don't come back to it but then others are just like i just don't have the creative you know juice right now to like do those type of things and i'm always you know for me i'm always like just you know post whatever i think other people are kind of overthink it sometimes and, and i understand that you want it to be nice and all of that i've just gotten to the point where i think my style is that i i do care don't get me wrong but like you just I just want to have things out there. Yeah, I'm not curating my feed the way that I, you know, felt like I needed to before. Now I'm just taking in pictures of the things that I'm doing um, and the things I'm using and just talking about like my love for those things or whatever it is. And I'm finding that people are really engaging with that. I don't get a ton of likes or, you know, anything like that. But the people who are commenting the community, though, around it is is big. Like, I'd rather have people be like, oh, my gosh, I'm doing that, too, than just like it for the sake of liking it. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I've always been on that, but I think I also had to like get to a point where I was okay with that. I know for a while I was like, oh no, this has to be great. And I also think I came in at a time and you were here before, like I say here before, but like five years ago, I remember a lot of the people we hang out with now and chat with, they were all here before. And it was like the height of bullet journaling fandom. So everyone was so used to getting, you know, thousands of likes and tons thousands. of engagement. And then it went down to like hundreds and they were like, no one's engaging with my content. And I was like, I got 150 likes. I've gone viral. <laughs> it's, I still feel that way. I still only get that many sometimes. And I'm like, this is awesome. So there's a, a thing that um, I found recently. It was called, it's called viral for me, BFM. And like, that's a part like you celebrate what's gone viral for you that could be 500 likes on something because for me 500 likes on a photo on instagram is more than i usually ever get so i'm like yes this is you know this is great and then i don't care though i'm just having fun i need a viral for me you do I, it could be anything post I mean, one thing this video is going to be viral for you it's going to be viral for me is there a anti-retroviral for this viral <laughs> I don't know. Should we stop talking about viral right now? Seems like a little hot topic. <laughs> like super hot topic at the minute. Uh, tell me how how is COVID going in your area? What's what's happening over there? 
So it is, it's super stressful right now. My wife's a teacher. And so she's, you know, she sees 600 kids during the week and, you know, my kids are at school and everything else like that. And they're, you know, they're in school, they're out there, they're around groups. I'm not, I'm still working remotely. Um, and it is stressful sometimes because this new, you know, Omicron variant is getting everybody sick and it's, it's just, it's, everyone's just super nervous and on edge and coming back from the holidays, they basically were just like, be prepared because it's going to just be running rampant. So there's a lot of concern, especially at schools and things like that around it. Um, luckily, everyone in my family has stayed safe and, um, you know, we're doing weekend by not really going anywhere. So, you know, that's why also everyone's like, how do you do so many videos? I was like, we don't go and do anything. So, you know, we're whatever, at home but, all the time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different world. I think we live in at the moment. Yeah, it absolutely is. So it's just, you know, making sure everyone's safe. That's all you can really do. I think for me, it's been really um, interesting to, with like working, right? Working remote. Um, I've worked with a number of remote team members for years. And then after, you know, two years ago, it became just like everybody was. And so I like the idea of a hybrid. I like being around people, but I think it's also really great to be able to be like, hey, we're being safe right now. It's not great to be in large groups. Uh, you just don't know and like hang out and we know that we can still do our jobs it's not like anybody uh, like that but i know that we're in a very kind of similar thing like a privileged kind of space to do that not every job allows for that so it gets no, super I, difficult super yeah so tell me how has because you know we we started chatting about a thousand years ago um it was i remember but, it very vividly too oh you because, did <laughs> i remember it so vividly because it started off as one of those fun engagement groups and I want to say you were moderating it. I I want to say maybe, and the reason maybe maybe not. But I remember someone being very strict about the rules, and I it was the it was the first time I'd ever been a part of an engagement group, and I was like a baby bullet journal account. I don't even know. I didn't have that many like followers, or like maybe like a thousand, or maybe I don't know. Maybe it was when I was at five. I don't remember. But I remember getting invited, and I was around you. And who else was in there? Haley, I think, was in there. Oh, it would have been Rose. Rose. It would have been um, Rachel. Erin would have been in there. Um, yep. uh, Bonnie would have been in there. Yes. I, yeah, uh, that's what I think how we originally like all met, like the Arch and all thing too. Um, but yeah, I remember being in that and just being so intimidated because you all were like these ginormous accounts and all of that. And it was just so funny because as we naturally do, it was like when you post, you got to post the link here and do all that stuff and then it was funny because we were all doing that and then we started chatting and then we started to get to know each other a lot more and i'm and that's why i feel like it was you because you were such a rule follower which which knowing you more over the years is really funny to me now and you were like we're going to create a whole separate chat for this because this is a chatty bunch and we're going to put your things here and you're going to chat over here <laughs> and i don't think here chat here separate. yeah and separate it and so it was it was great and then that chat is my longest running chat and it's been cool and I think from that though it's been awesome because like you just said like Bonnie was in there and she was kicking off Archer and Olive and then to see how that has evolved over the time too is really neat but I'm still just I feel super honored to even have been around a lot of you and now you're just my friends like it's just now, like, now oh, we're my. like <laughs> It is. Oh, it's so uh, Plants funny. Blossom was in there. Nicole was in there. She was in there. That's right for the beginning, and then everyone got stressed out because of it, because those engagement groups are a lot of work. I don't think anyone realizes it until you do it. It's like it's a great idea, and it's good for like a month. But then after that, I'm always like, I couldn't keep up because you were like during the day, and you had like rules around not you, but like rules for the engagement group. Right? It was like post, comment, like within the first. 10 minutes or something i'm, I'm like, like i'm at work i'm driving i'm like i don't want to get kicked out of this group i'm new here <laughs> i'm just driving and texting i gotta press my locks <laughs> and uh it was it was cool for me though so it was awesome um as a whole so that was super neat but yeah i mean this past year for me has been amazing i'm still kind of blown away how much i've grown in this this year alone but I think a lot of it is just, I'm hoping a lot of it is just like organically, people getting to know me more, me engaging more, trying different things. Um, the reels, I know that a lot of people don't love them, but I think that also was a 
really big thing for me just because I was trying to do that over on TikTok. <laughs> it just wasn't happening for me there. And then it was like, they brought it over to Instagram and that's where my people are. And then I could finally show more of my personality through that and just have some fun. Um, and that kind of started to grow it too, I think. And then oh, the end of this year was just kind of crazy. Like I was just looking today. I was like, I just hit 21,000. I was like, how did that happen? Like a month ago, I was celebrating 20,000. How did I get to 21 all of a sudden? Uh, and it's just super cool. And same thing with YouTube. Like um, someone just commented on my setup video. When I set it up, I think I had like 6,000 subscribers there. And then they just commented today. They're like, whoa, like in this video, you said you had 6,000 subscribers. Now you're at eight. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that I was. This is awesome. So there's just been like a lot of growth. Yeah. So it's been really cool to like have that happening. And I always, I don't feel bad. I'm, I'm glad to celebrate it. But I remember earlier at the end of last year and like middle of last year, when a lot of people were losing a lot of followers, I felt really bad because I was growing. <laughs> and you're Everybody doing it behind else. closed doors. You're like, <laughs> I was, everyone was like, screw the algorithm. This is BS. I'm doing everything I can do. And I'm over <laughs> here like, I'm doing everything I can do and it's working. Like, uh. but, um, but yeah, so it's, it's been really cool. And I like to celebrate the celebrate those little wins. I think that's kind of like my mantra for this year is to celebrate the little wins because that's what makes me happy. And while I love to like hit the big monstrous goals, I find that, you know, just setting small little steps and going at it has been really cool. So that's been my real big focus um, to like, just do more of that. Nice. So How about for the, yourself. <laughs> over this last year, tell me, <laughs> What has been the most gossipy thing you have seen on in the community? <laughs> oh gosh, I knew that these were going to be tough questions, and I didn't know them ahead. Um, the most gossipy thing. Uh, so I I want to say the most gossipy thing that I feel like it's been kind of talked about is like bullet journal proper coming out and kind oh. of accepting more of the creativeness of what is and i'm glad about that like i'm very happy about we that. All are. yeah so that i think is the biggest thing is because it was like wait what's happening here because uh what was it two or three years ago it was kind of the opposite right where a lot of people were getting mad because this all started with the bullet journal method um and then it was almost like the it was the battle of the journaling it was are you a creative journal or you're not a true bullet journal is you know following the method and then it kind of like subsided and then it kind of came back so i think that was the biggest thing i mean i'll i'll be very open and transparent you know i've uh it's been cool i've been a part of kind of this like i don't know about like a restart program or kind of a little bit of more of like an affiliate type program with them so, uh -huh. and I'm very open and honest in that group too. I don't like sugarcoat it. Like it's cool because they get to like- Have you ever sugarcoated anything? <laughs> I, well, yes, I have sugarcoated some things, but um, there's, but both certain things, especially when you have that opportunity to like speak up and you know this, I was the same way on the design team. Like if something's out there, I'm going to say it in a nice way. I'm not going to be rude about it. Um, but it was just like, hey, what's going on here? Like, what are we doing? And it was cool because with that specifically, I think we'll see more of that coming out. It it was not necessarily about how you do it. It is. It's the how and the what, right? Or the how and the why of it. But um, I think it's kind of kind of took off in like this weird direction where everyone thought you had to do it a certain way. And mm -hmm. what was missing was the true value of bullet journaling, like what it actually is. And I think that people were getting they were getting mad at the system when they just weren't actually following the actual method. And that's why yeah. it was failing. So yeah. um, I think that's the most gossipy thing, but I, I do feel like it's going in a really good path now. Um, it's cool to be a part of it and see kind of how that's happening. And I'm um, talking about like the actual reason behind it. So for me, I feel like that's the most gossipy thing. I don't really know if there was anything, there was that one person, I don't really follow them, but, or I do now, but y'all might have been talking about them where they got upset about affiliate marketing and they did a whole YouTube video on affiliate marketing and how it was like um, not the right thing to do. And it was, um, I forget who it was though. She was like a big personality and, and curses a lot in her videos. 
Don't remember. I don't know. That was the only other thing I can like think of that was like gossipy because people were like, wait, affiliate marketing is good, but their video was like, no, it's 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 you know, you're you're prying on other people and taking their money and we shouldn't be doing that right now. But that's just I don't know. But yeah, that was I don't know again, it wasn't really gossipy, but I remember like talking about it and being talked about in the community because the people I mean that's how people make extra money is through affiliate marketing. And I think if you're like greasy about it and you're like trying to like swindle people yeah it's not cool but if you're talking about products that you're excited about and other people are too and you're putting out the effort and somebody wants to use your code to like show support like i'm all about it but i'm there and it might have been around that yeah i think it's the video i think it was more about like the the like snaky people who do it versus like hey yeah because i'm an affiliate you do see a lot of that on on facebook right where a lot of people will just be like oh what sort of notebook are you could you recommend and then you've got like 37 people commenting use my code to buy this <laughs> really cool notebook it's free shipping <laughs> yeah and it's like oh no stop we all like three comments in we should have maybe not done that um yeah because that that to me feels like it's not genuine or like that you're actually trying to you know say actually i'm really behind this brand um yeah. So tell me, what is your most, to date, what is your most favorite notebook you've ever used? Wow. My absolute most favorite notebook I've ever used. Mm. I, have, I have two for two very different reasons. Um, so I would say my favorite, and this is, has nothing to do with the fact that we work with Archer and Olive, but it's my very first Archer and Olive notebook. And the reason that it's my favorite notebook is that I was coming from the Loistrums, the old ones, and that paper was so thin and it just ghosted horribly. And I remember the first time I like wrote in that arch and olive and I was like, is this magic? What is that? <laughs> it was, and it was very cool. So it was a really awesome experience. And um I just, I'll never forget. I think it was also one too. It was very early on and Bonnie was like, I oh, love this. Was it those. like one of the smaller ones? Like one of the smaller no, size the, A5s? No, it was this, it was this guy. It, I don't know if it was a smaller size A5, but it's just, I think it was like a 192. Um, like one of the just original, just blue. And this is also early on too, when like a lot of the notebooks were not, um, I, I they weren't, um, Oh, look. Oh, you got like one of the OOGs. OOGs. Like it's not even it's not even an A5 size, actually. Oh, yeah. I wasn't that early on, but I just I just remember like not even an A5. That's so, that's so funny. Yeah, I just remember being like, I guess this is the only color I can get because everything was like flowers and color and everything else. And I was like, I'll get the blue one. <laughs> so that was cool. And then my other favorite one was is actually um, uh, Baron Fig. It's the Do Work Journal. So it's it's such a hard one because I love everything about it, but the paper was a little is a little thin for me, and I also got it after I've been working in Archer and all notebooks. So like when you go from never having ghosting or anything like that to something that does, you have to like kind of mentally overcome it. And I had worked in it, I actually really loved it, but it is more of a guided journal. It's kind of set up every single day for you, so you do that, and I loved it. And it was work focused too. That was the other thing too. So it was like, what are your weekly goals and your tasks? And then every day you were carrying those things through. So those are two. I know you said like my most favorite. I'll, I'll say like my number one is this just because it was my very first. And I loved that I could like do anything in it. And I didn't have any of that ghosting or bleeding. And then the other one's like 1.5 just because of the productivity and like usefulness of it. Fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'd be I'd be hard pressed to say what my favorite is. My very first <laughs> notebook of all time, of all time, was a moleskin. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was moleskin. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, when you look at the OG sort of um Bujo vibe, like OG yeah. Bujo. Um <laughs> OG Bujo with the this is like 2016, maybe 2015, 2016. And I oh, ended up really, really on. lazy and I just printed out sheets that I stuck in because the paper was so thin. And I was just like, well, <laughs> I'll just print out sheets to make it work for me. Have you ever so, done a flip through of that journal? 
I've never done a fruit fruit of that journal. You like should my, do. Oh my god! Like it's even got like super cute, adorable old school stick. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, like that. That is such a fun one to go through because you're there. Yeah. I'm I'm coming up on five years of bullet journaling in April, and I have just all of these things about like what I've learned about it, and I flipped through some of those old journals too, but it's just so fun to do that because it also shows like how your brain was working. Um, you know, you were like, I have to figure this thing out and how to do this. So I'm going to print pieces of paper out and put them in there instead. Or like, versus like now how you could do it. I think Aww. you could even probably see, I don't know. I'm going to assume, I don't know that I've seen your journal. Oh, no, now, now it's just like a big mess. Oh, it's, it's a sketchbook. <laughs> it's essentially just a notepad, like a giant fancy mm -hmm. notepad. Um, yeah. Every so often I'll make, like if I'm bored or if I've got a bit of spare time on my hands, if this is actually appalling, um, if I'm bored or I've got spare time on my hands, then I'll make it like a nice spread. But oh, yeah. overall- well, you're not doing, but you're not following like, the bullet journal method. You're kind oh, of no, creating no. your like, own journal. Usually it's a mess. Brainstorming and-, and, and like Yeah, that. it's mainly brainstorming and then, you know, seeing how I can do things or design things and- mm -hmm. So there's a lot of notes and a lot of scribbles and scratches and et cetera. But yeah, my personal favorite is my B5, Archer and Olive Oves. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't like, you know what? I, people have like, people always come at me about, oh, it's because you work for Archer and Olive or, you know, you do design team stuff with Archer and Olive. And actually, no, it's actually not that at all. I've had every single notebook of all You've time. had a lot. I have every single notebook. If you name a brand, I've had it. And <laughs> look, there's a couple that I really like. You know, mm -hmm. there's, um, there's those lovely Tumbery Metries or tum Tumbery Marys. Um, those are lovely oh, and they're thick and they're coated. They're like what Scribbles and Matter used to be. Um, oh. You know, like the nice coated paper with it. Like it was really nice. Um, yeah, I've never, I great. never had a Scribbles That Matter. I know a lot of people were big on them. I really only, my my journals over time essentially had been the Loistrums to begin with. And then it's been a lot of Archer and Olive uh, notebooks. But then again, a lot of those like Baron Fig. But some of those I hadn't really heard about. And that was the other thing too. When I first started, and I don't, I mean, it sounds like maybe you were, really into it like the the stationary journal like all of those different things like i was trying to figure out i didn't know a lot about it coming into it so i've learned a lot over time i even know myself i catch myself where i'm talking about like gsm paper or i'm talking about like pen quality or inks and i was like oh my gosh i've learned a lot in these Where past five years <laughs> <laughs> yeah Where before i was like i love this big pen it's fantastic and now i've like I went through my pen drawer, my well, my wife's pen drawer the other day, and I was like, "What is this? Like one of those like Ew. cheap, like um, you know, the ones you get from like a store or like you know uh, a giveaway or something." And I'm like, "Get rid of this crap!" I'm like, Ew. "Let's put all my nice ones in here now." <laughs> I won't. I, had a I won't even bag. touch. <laughs> I had a pen bag on my desk at work the other day, and someone like reached into my pen bag, and my first response was like, "Smack! What are you doing?" Yeah. Like your good pen bag, not your borrowed yeah, pen bag. Like my pen bag, pen bag that I was using. And I'm like, mm, no, what? No, don't get your sticky fingers on my nice pens. Ew. No way. I, it's so funny. I was talking about that because when I went back to work for like a day before they were like, y'all need to go back home. Um, I unpacked my desk and I set up a pen holder and I had to throw away so many pens that they were just like exploded and just like everything else from being, you know, in a box for the past two years. And I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep some of these here. Cause that way when people ask you for a pen, I'm going to be like, Oh, here you go. Have this one. And I'll have my own like secret stash over here for myself. Or has this really <laughs> gross pen with like a little thing that pulls out of it and tells you what it does or like a calendar. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I've bitten the cap off of this one. You can use that. No, I wouldn't give them that one now. But I had a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. What you do? So, so tell me, you have been super into posting on Reels at the moment. How's that been going? Because yes. you spoke about it earlier, and you've had some really, really, really fun Reels recently. Um, <laughs> You have, especially around our spoilers time. I, that was just, that got me right excited. I'm thinking- You were so pumped. 
I think we should totally make that like a regular occurrence. Oh, I think it has to be. People still were asking me afterwards. What's so funny about it is that, you know, over time you make the like different friends, right? As you go through this community and, um, and Erica Craffinated, who's on the design team now, um, her and Kay from um, Stuck on Creations. Like we just started like chatting on the side anyway, especially before um, when the applications and things came out. And overall, we just became like another like group of friends. And so I passed my ideas by them a lot. And I was totally like, you know what I should do? Because you know, people go wild in the spoiler groups. Wow. I was like, they crazy. I was like, it would be so funny just to do that. And they were like, just do it, Mark, just do it. Like, and I was like, I don't know. I don't think people will really like it. Like, I don't know. Maybe they'll think I'm making fun of them. And I did the one and I was, I mean, I, I, I was just cracking up the whole time that I did it. But it's funny because it's kind of mixed um, ways about it. I was just watching a video today that was talking about like, where should you post your videos? It was more kind of a business-based one. It was like, do you use TikTok or do you use Instagram Reels? Like, where should you do it? And it was talking about like demographics and breaking it down and all of that. And it was talking about like, it was saying, if you're going to post like a trend, no, I'm sorry. If you're going to research trends, research trends on TikTok because Instagram is two weeks late to the TikTok trend. So it's about a two week time period between when something is trendy on TikTok to when it's trendy on Reels, which top I found tip. very interesting. Thanks, Mark. Top tip. Yeah, no, absolutely. Top tip. So but the thing is, is you're going to have a hard time finding those sounds on Instagram because they haven't made it there yet. But you could certainly be the person who brings it there. Um, but like I said before, I consume a lot of content on TikTok for entertainment. It's like watching TV for me. Um, but sometimes you'll find ideas there. And so everyone's like, Mark, like, how do you come up with your ideas? What do you do? And so I tell them all the time, like my secret right here is like, you watch them, you have to watch them, but like find out what's trendy or something funny. And then just kind of like, morph it into like your niche right so like we deal with stationery and notebooks all the time and all this type of stuff right so like if you find something funny think about how you could incorporate that into what you do and then the community will like it so when i hear these like funny sounds and someone's doing like a dance to it i'm like well i'm not going to dance to it i'm going to do this instead um and it's just you're been not going to dance to it i'm very disappointed uh, it's really funny because I thought about that when I first started because I was like, okay, what's going to grab people's attention? Like, what is everyone else doing? And I couldn't do the like point thing that everyone else, like all the other people were doing, like the things popping up. And I was just like, I can't, I don't have anything of value to do. I think I made fun of it once because <laughs> it was, it was like, that's all you saw. But it's just like finding those and having fun. I love like the transitions and I love like, uh, the creative process of making them like more than just that. Like my wife hates it. Cause she's like, if I have to listen to that damn sound one more time and I'm like, well, cause it keeps replaying. Yeah. You're and then you're like, it. Oh, I can just give me a second. It's almost that. Like it's almost po once it's posted, you're not going to hear it again, but just give me a moment. Just give me yeah. A moment. Cause yeah. Every time you like put in like a text mm -hmm. box, it's like, gotta play it again. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah but I mean I'll be honest like I love I love doing them I some of them I do spend time on right like the I would say like the ones that took the longest to create are definitely the newsreel ones um the Harry Potter one that I did a while back took a long time and then the shape the acrylograph shake weight one that I did like those take a long time yeah because I had to like watch it I had to I had to like try to memorize like what they were saying and like dress up and do all the different things for it um and edit it together right that's the other part but for some of the quick ones i mean i can film like i can film four or five reels in under 10 minutes just because i've already thought through in my head like what's the concept for what might i do yeah. and then you know do 10 to 15 seconds of the thing and after a while you start to get good at it like early on it didn't take me that quick to do and not all of them are that quick but like they don't need to be movie level Quality, creations. No. They're supposed to be fun and engaging, right? They're supposed to be, you know, something that's that's kind of a little bit more organic and like, oh, this yeah. kind of shows who you are. And, you know, I look at some of those curated ones and I'm just like, how are you like who what what is your target audience, babes? Um, <laughs>
who are these curated people that I know nothing about? As she sips her empty wine now. Oh. I know. Oh, go oh. the refill. Can't have you having empty wine on this call. Um. Yeah. So I'm really. I've been really impressed by um how you've oh. reintegrated yourself into the community <laughs> after leaving the amazing design team. Oh, thanks. Oh, I had to find a way to still become relevant, and that was a great way to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I you know never know it's like people are gonna forget about you but no I it was super fun I I mean I love doing those like I said I, I plan on I want to come up with like different ways of doing them I was thinking about I don't know oh, do I give it away I don't know millions of people are gonna watch this they'll all know millions, my ideas millions so so I did the new the newscast for that subscription box I was yeah. thinking about doing like a trashy talk show theme for the next ones so like a Mari Polvich like you know like a jerry you springer are the, vibe. yeah like jimmer yeah jerry springer like something along the lines of that jerry, i just <laughs> jerry, jerry, mark, mark, mark. exactly so yeah so i mean that was just an idea but sometimes again like i don't think through them a lot sometimes it just comes to me like i'm just like that was one of those random things it was a complete joke and then and you know erica was like you have to do that and i was like i don't know and then an hour later i had the first one put together and she was like dying she's like okay so you did it and then it got such great reaction i was like i guess i have to keep doing this um it. it's now a thing <laughs> Yeah, and then now people don't trust me. Like you're like, hey, want to see this thing? Don't take any screenshots. And I was like, no, no, no. I respect, I respect the things. I would never, I would never do that. But in I those times of making that happen, it's cool because that the spoiler group, it, it's like a, it's you know, like it's like everyone. <laughs> everyone's so excited and they're like joining together and we've all got out our like red string and like you know push pins figuring stuff out and then it's like once we figure it out then it's like i know y'all see it it's like everyone starts cannibalizing themselves it's insane and i was like oh okay i'm i'm done with these sneak peeks now i'll be over here <laughs> um hey so we took back feedback on that we took feedback oh really and we've said all right for the next subscription box here we go you can have a sneak peek breaking news uh breaking news um we've said what we're gonna do is because some people really like the sneak peeks some people really don't so we've decided to split it in half what we're going to do is we're going to do like a third system we're going to show everything for one third we're going to sneak peek a third and then there is a third of things that no one will know about until they arrive well there's that much stuff in the subscription boxes <laughs> i mean that's amazing is that just for the next one or moving forward well we think it will we're going to test it for the next one to see if okay that hits the mark i love it I mean, I just actually, I mean, before when I was on the design team, like, obviously, we we got those, right? But once I wasn't, I signed up for it, because I just, I love the idea of them. And I love the stuff. And I might not use everything in there. But I think a lot of people put it a really good way. Like, it's the excitement of getting it. It's, you know, the excitement of like having those things that might not ever come out, right? Like, that's super cool. Like, people always ask me about my my ruler that we got i forget which sub box that was in but like i use this all the time people were like where is that from how do i get it i was like no like this wasn't a sub box they, that. <laughs> no they've never released it again and i kind of i was like mine's breaking a little bit i've used it so much but like that's just one of those things where i'm like and no one will have that or what did i post the other day it was something from the very first one it was like the magical box or the the colors they did something with the colors on that and it was funny because people were like, oh my gosh, that's from the first one. Remember that very first? So I love that idea. I think that's great because I love the surprise because other people's subscription boxes, you don't know what it is until you get it. So you can't complain about something. You know, I guess you can complain about it afterwards if you wanted to, but I love that idea. I think that's really cool to like be like, hey, here are a few things here are not a few things and here's the, you know you're not and even gonna know things you'll never know about is. until they arrive in your grubby little mitts <laughs> and this be ready for them this sub box this next sub box um they've started arriving and i'll tell you something else for free is they're pretty bloody awesome 
I've, every single one has been pretty bloody awesome for me I think I, oh. again I'm just a big fan so well the last you know the the purple one the I call it the purple one I don't know um the one that oh, we just the big, had, one. the big one I feel like I feel like they were a couple of disappointed people especially with the size of the notebook and I think really only people kind of got on board with that after they'd heard what the justification was for that and you know that we mm-hmm. do put a lot of intention into the products and we put a lot of yeah it definitely felt um it's funny because I absolutely forgot when I got my box I filmed the whole unboxing but I feel like it's been so long now since it that it wouldn't really be a relevant video but in that video I talk about that like it remind it was almost it was a very carefully curated box right and not to say the other ones are not curated they are but they they were kind of more of like a, a jumble a jumble of things, but like different things in there. But this one was like, here's a notebook that you can use with this thing. Here's the inserts that go in here. Here are the gel pens that work with this notebook to do. And so Everything it was almost more like a kit. That. Yeah, it was more like a kit than it was necessary. And that, again, it you can do the the company can do whatever it wants with their products. But um, I definitely can understand that where it felt like that because those other ones were just like. I don't know. Remember, I still remember like before the like the acrylographs were like those weren't even a thing yet, and pe- and people were like so excited about it, or maybe they were. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Did were acrylographs out before the first subscription box with yes. those colors? Okay. No. Yes. No. no. Wait. <laughs> uh, the acrylographs were out, and then those that first box had two unique colors and colors i think that we'd used in the past from memory oh maybe or that could it, have been what was, was the, that most the valentine's box I, see now i can't even well i was gonna say that could be the drama thing because remember we were like these colors have already been used before and they're like have <laughs> you? i'm so confused i was like i can't tell what the difference between most of these colors are so sure <laughs> if you say so like, can i get names on these please <laughs> wearing purple now um <laughs> i would say you're wearing yellow or green that's usually that i know it's in that family i just don't know which it's is in that the color. family no i'm wearing yellow i wear yellow, yellow all okay. the time now because hashtag team yellow um oh, okay. that's you know I, I like live team yellow i live and breathe it now um okay. yeah that, that's a, like that's quite a bit that's changed i guess since we like since last year to now or the year before that um okay yeah. so do you have any questions for me so i was thinking about this when we were like any questions to do so i was gonna do a note i was gonna do a notebook or stationary f marry or kill Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, this could be really good to do. Um, so I was going to do this for brush pens, right? Ooh. So Ooh. Oh. you got a, you had F1, Mar- I'm keeping this PG for the kids, Mary I, one I or Kale one, right? So Tombow brush pens, the Colograph, you know, Archer and Olive brush pens or the dingbats brush pens because i've used all three of them i don't know if you've used all three but i've used all three yeah i've used all three of them i would absolutely oh it's so hard (laughs) okay (laughs) absolutely kill um dingbats i'm not interested they really they fray really quickly not keen um Tombo, the old school nature of it makes me want to marry it because okay. it's an OG. Um, so I would probably marry them just due to the OG nature of them. And I, due to its unique tip and its unethical, I would <laughs> absolutely the tip was a little out of those teleographs. Let me just love it right now. Yeah. There you go. It's like a hard but flexible tip. That's what you're looking for in your brush. Especially one that I'd like to F as a hard yeah. tip. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad I thought about that question because I, I literally was like, what are some questions for her? Um, so I had that one for you. So okay. you did that okay. one. So my next, so my other question for you um, was, and I don't want to trigger anything, but um, when you've taken your breaks on 
let, like, let me put it this way, right? So when I first got to know you and I was terrified of you, um, <laughs> no, I was intimidated and terrified of you, mostly because of the engagement group. And I was like, oh my God, she's gonna hate me. Um, but then we became kindred spirits over the time that we've known each other. All right. All right, so when we first met, right, you were heavy into my inner creative, you had the blog going, you had the Instagram account going, like I tagged you every post so that you would repost my stuff one day. Um, and then it kind of like stopped. I was curious on if there was anything specific that was like, yeah, like I've had, an, whether, I don't know, was it I've had, it's too much, it was overwhelming, or was there like a specific point where you're like, this is more important than keeping that up? Like, was there any certain thing? Kind of channel your energy a little bit more. And it just came at a time when, you know, the Art of Bujo, which was kind of the OG reshare account, right? Um, there was a there was a woman who didn't get reshared, and um, she got really angry about it, and got all her friends to report the account, and got my account taken down for like a month and a half. And I was just like well this is really frustrating because one of the things that was really important to me with the art of bujo was to make sure that i asked for permission that there was i was one of like the first accounts that really pushed don't do copyrights infringement make sure that you're asking explicit permission when you're sharing things um you know make sure that you've you know you, make sure you've just ticked all the boxes and you're being kind to people like just make sure you're doing that and she didn't like that I hadn't reshared her stuff. So got on board with a whole bunch of people. And when I did finally reshare her stuff, she claimed that it was a copyright infringement. So it got all her friends to jump on board and report the account. So it was really frustrating. And it was just like, I put a lot of energy and effort into kind of creating a community that feels a little bit more wholesome. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it just felt like a gut punch. And it kind of put me off Instagram for a little while. So I was feeling a little down mm -hmm. in the dumps. So that okay, I'll give, I'll give YouTube a bit of a crack. Why not? Um, gave YouTube a crack, and you know, then there was the contentious notebook therapy YouTube. I'll link it below. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link it below and I'll turn off the damn comments. Um, no, I'll leave the comments on. It's fine. Um, I've grown a bit of a thicker skin now, and you know, I I think what really frustrated me about that was, you know, I was talking about my experience with a company that the you know, not everybody's going to have the same experience, but my experience was pretty shitty. And it wasn't just one time. It was like two times, three times. And I was like, mm, this is starting to look like a theme and a trend. And then to have all of their minions run after me with pitchforks, I'm just like, no, that is not what I put myself out there for I'm sharing that I didn't like the notebook I didn't like what it had to offer me that's just my opinion it doesn't have to be your opinion Mark you like Lostrom I'm like oh babe <laughs> I don't like how it goes so, but you like we do right we like different stuff mm -hmm. I'm sharing what I like I'm trying to be as objective as possible and it was around that time that I'd started doing a lot more design teamwork for Archer and Olive mm where I was on the design team with you, remember, where I was yeah. like, come on, guys, we've got to get that content out. And we were on the design team. We were, you know, doing stuff for Bonnie. And then we kind of, that kind of morphed into, actually, do you need some help managing the design team? And that's kind of morphed into, do you need help doing something else? Do you need help doing something else? <laughs> this is where we yeah. are now. <laughs> yeah, now it's crazy. I mean, it's awesome how it's evolved since then for you. Yeah, I, and I didn't know that. I didn't know the whole thing about the art of Bujo and like that getting like taken down on all of that. Cause that was, there was like a handful of those. And especially early on, like when I was coming in, that was a way to grow your account was to get reshared. Yeah. So like going and doing that, but I can totally understand. Like it was just really, you know, upset. where it was. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that happens. I think anytime that it goes down and you're just kind of like, this wasn't my intention. You know, I, I wasn't yeah. trying to cause problems, especially with that and resharing and then for the video itself, but you had done a whole series of videos about notebook reviews like that was a part yeah. of a series, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And I did a ton of them and I did, you know, um, and another one around, you know, some really cool, you know, one GSM because it's, not, you know, Archer and Olive is not the only one GSM notebook. It just happens 
that we love them. Um, but you know, it's not the only one GSM notebook. Maisie Lane is fantastic. I love their notebooks. They're really great. And you know, STM uh, scribbles that matter is a bit hit and miss because their their paper is. I, I feel like their paper is just a little bit more grainy and doesn't um, work as well as others. But that's again, it's because I've tested so many notebooks. I'm not just yeah. talking out of my ass. Um, but do you think <laughs> it was because of your affiliation with Archer and all that they also came at you and they thought it was like a takedown video? Yeah. Like, like kinda, oh, this is better than I that. I do feel like that's maybe what was perceived from that. Um, but, you know, when you email a company and you're like, hey, can you help me out with some questions? And they don't reply to you or left you on, like leave you on scene. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. you know uh, i don't know if you're are you going to keep up with like this interview style stuff because i think this is super fun <laughs> I think, you know what i think i may just do that um well i think i might do i might do erica next well, i'm glad to be your first not well, your sloppy I, seconds yeah <laughs> um erica can be sloppy seconds you know i was talking to um <laughs> i was talking to meg this morning from um planners and wine oh okay my fave um and they are just fantastic like their their podcast is really great and she we were talking about something totally unrelated and she's like but you're so animated like you miss your personality when you're doing um crafty stuff like you don't see your personality and kind of that doesn't really come through when you're yeah, doing top down and stuff, stuff. um <laughs> And she was right. And I think, I, you know, I think I've started kind of adding a little bit more of that into my reels as well now, because I just, what, I started reels like two weeks ago. <laughs> I was so proud of you. I loved it so yeah. much. And I love how I've become like the unofficial person to like show stuff to you. are like, is this okay? And I was like, okay. it doesn't have to be perfect. I absolutely think it's great. Just like to try it out and do it and like show that. I agree. I would actually completely agree with her. Like, again getting to know you and like being on all the stuff except for like when you like come at me for showing too much in sneak peeks uh other than that though like it's fantastic you never want to be on the bad side with the sneak peeks but i agree i think it's so much fun I, that's why when you were saying you were doing these i was like my hand was up i was like do i want to respond that quickly i was like yes i want to respond that quickly because i think it's so fun and i mean i've thought about like with the you know the obvious hangout podcast that i keep starting and like stopping and restarting i was thinking like thanks for my invite <laughs> well that's what i'm saying is that i want to do more of that but i wasn't quite sure on like how to because i'm such a effing stickler for like audio and like making sure it's right and then i've just kind of because i don't like listening to podcasts where like the audio is way off <laughs> and, yeah <laughs> And you can you can tell that it's like not really whatever so for me i've been trying to research different ways to do that so that i can extract the audio for a podcast not just like a video podcast which i think video podcasts would be fun too but something you know like joe rogan like when he's does both again a lot of money is behind that show now but i actually prefer listening to something like that than i do watching it but i know a lot of people who prefer to watch versus just listening right I think it probably all depends on where you're listening to your podcast, right? If you're at home or if you're in the car or whatever. But um, that was a big thing for me. I want to have more guests on. You know that you're on that list. Um, and we'll talk about something non, like my, my thing I want to do with that is obviously talk a little bit about the things people are known for, but then talk about like other hobbies. So this was also exciting for me because I was like, well, let's see how this sounds when it comes out because I might do the same thing. Uh, take that idea and uh, see what happens. Ooh, was someone ringing our door? No, it's uh, notifications to tell me that um, it's school pickup, but it's school holidays because it's summer holidays oh. at the moment. So I don't know why it's telling me it's school pickup. I'm like, <laughs> like someone's that... knocking on your door. <laughs> He's in a show. He's in the other room watching a show. <laughs> have you ha have you ordered food? <laughs> I know. So I think that's awesome that you're doing more of it, though. I think it's I think it'll be super fun because it also get to see people that I mean, every time like I remember having that first like design team meeting and everybody was on camera and you're like, oh, that's what you look like. Like, I remember the first time I saw Rose like and and I was like, I had never seen her before. She never posted a picture. And I was like, I can put a face to the curse words you're typing at me now. It's so great. <laughs> So many curse words that we can't use on YouTube because we would be banned. 
Yeah, and we want this to not be banned. We want, we want this, this for everyone to, be... to see. <laughs> we want this to be a positive experience. Um, <laughs> but yes. It has to be. It has it's been fun, though, and I really appreciate you being my my first victim. So that's been helpful. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that I, was my that was my reels dance. I hope you're ready for more of this in the near future. <laughs> you know I'm gonna edit something in over you there with like music and like <laughs> that's fine. I feel like we should end with like a special reel. What is why I'm sorry? I'm just inventing a dance as I go. What's a bin? Do you, do you, wait, do you actually, do you see things and hear real music now where you're like, oh, that would go with that song where you're like, bend with it, lean with it. Mm. Oh, no, I hear sounds. I say the sounds out loud sometimes when I'm talking in normal wait, wait, conversation. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> What was I, I was just, I got out of the car the other day. I dropped the kids off at school. I got out of the car and what did I, I literally like, was talking to myself <laughs> I, I was I was talking to myself I was like I, I don't know was one of those voiceover sound things and no, I was right like in your life. <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh like it's just a part of my my life now it used to be worse early on with TikTok I feel like I, I would just hear the songs in my head constantly and then now that a lot of those TikTok songs are on the radio like you hear them even with their more. songs from the radio yeah like a lot of people a lot of people will get their start like they'll like they'll get their start on tiktok and then their what? songs make it on the radio <sighs> so like the i think like the a b c d e f u like that oh, was a song we do that song like every day yeah i love it i think it's great that one and then there's the what's that rock with it whatever rock you know, with it, it about. Click yeah snap with it so like that yeah like that whole like remix thing was definitely on the radio first and then now I just hear it on the regular radio all the time so it's funny so it's like you can't really escape it I, or even sometimes it was the the doja cat right doja cat is it doja cat and scissor where it's like you know whatever it has a little ding and so it was a lot of people who were like oh my coworkers think I'm straight and it's like you know blah 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 ding and so like we would be in the car doing that I did I think I did that for something else but I like didn't do it for that it was like made a something i don't know a face or something else that like the sound but like we would hear it in the car and then i would be like doing what was in the videos and then sometimes mm -hmm. i do just <laughs> i just say the the thing that happens so, i don't know i saw a, a totally random we're going off on a random tangent here but i saw a video on tiktok today with the girl with tourette's like legit has tourette's but her tics include sound clips and things from from tiktok because like the things that she says and she doesn't have control over will be like part of things that i've heard yeah it was interesting <laughs> like That's you're done now you're done and i was like oh that sounds familiar she's like yeah the tick oh i feel like i do that all the time so yeah Sure. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Anyway, anyway. So, circling all the way back. Um, super glad <laughs> to have had you as my first victim. I really appreciate you taking the time to have a little chat chatteroo as well. Um, super fun. I'm glad we could work it out. Thanks for being super flexible with your time and making this happen. And uh and I can't and I will to, link uh, all of your information below. Below. Subscribe and hit that bell and Watch. is it a still a bell i this is how long I, I this is how long i've been out of the game for. i'm like is it still a bell is it a bell it's a bell ling, ling, ling. it's a bell subscribe ling. and bell but it's not but you don't need to say it because if people like your content they will subscribe and hit the bell on their own so by saying it makes them not want to click it so don't oh. so maybe okay, you so just look don't. cute for a second look cute so they like us and they click <laughs> we're we're silly um <laughs> I know. that's why i love you so much awesome well have a wonderful rest of your summer day i will be going into my summer i'm sorry i you have a good rest of your summer day because i'm going into my winter evening right now that have is an all amazing of, evening and thank you all so of 20, much for time. <laughs> 27 degrees fahrenheit so 27 degrees fahrenheit what's that like zero 
I don't know what it is in Celsius. I don't do that. It's cold. <laughs> it's warm here today. Yeah. So. All right. It's well, right. I'll speak to you soon and thank you again. Yeah, no problem. I'll talk to you. See ya. Bye. Bye.